Bond, James Bond. Well, not really, but that's the topic for today. Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor. Today, we're going to talk about the wonderful world of James Bond collectibles and the values that they can bring in today's market. So with James Bond, there's a wide gambit of stuff that was available throughout its time frame. The earliest items would be books, and in some cases, some of the actual stories that were later published in books were published in magazines first. Steinbeck was another one that you'll see in magazines and things. Some of the earlier... Ian Fleming items will be found in books like this, Blue Book. It's part of Live and Let Die is in this book. That is why this one is so scarce. Many people haven't a clue on it. They don't pay much attention. and They don't see that right on top of the book it says Live and Let Die. Now, it doesn't say Ian Fleming right there on the cover, but this is a real good item here. Many people miss it because they don't realize what they're looking at. 380 bucks, 16 bids, good sale here. This is the kind of stuff that shows up at auctions, estate sales, garage sales, church sales, and even occasionally in some thrift stores also. So just a real good item here. And of course, you've got books from James Bond, Dr. No, the first one, first print right here, 1958. Excellent example. Most of these were first published in the UK, and those are the editions that you really want. In US dollars, this one sold for $730. An excellent, excellent example. Now, for me, I grew up with Roger Moore, so Roger Moore was the one that I remember seeing the most. I remember going in, I think, 1979 to see Moonraker. I also saw Octopussy as well with him in it. He was James Bond in my book. Everybody has their favorite. Mine just happened to be Roger Moore. Now, here's a whole set of them. Somebody has supplied the boxes to slide these into for protection. That's what you do with expensive books like this. This is the first edition library. It's the complete set of them. 14 novels by Ian Fleming, $1,995. Excellent example. And as you can see, it's the same cover, same edition, same everything. They sell just superbly. I never have one of these sitting on shelves when I turn them up. Dust jackets are the best. It's harder to find, obviously, the British editions here in the United States but you still can sell the U.S. first editions for some decent money as well. Now, posters have always been a thing for me. I worked in the theater. I had a 40 by 60 double sheet for Moonraker on my wall when I was a child when it first came out. Awesome. I love the poster-wise. This is a teaser poster from the 70s announcing that he's coming back. Now, it doesn't say the film. This is a teaser. Fairly scarce. $3,650. 11 bids, real sales. This is just an awesome item here. Now, here's the man with the golden gun, another Roger Moore one. Christopher Lee is in this. I had the pleasure of meeting him once in my life. Interesting gentleman. Interesting movie. Now, this is a British quad poster. It's long. Some of these would be seen in maybe a subway or something along that line. $1,260. The next slot here is some lobby cards, which would have been displayed in a lobby back in the day. They've pretty much been phased out, but some large establishments still will have some lobby cards in their lobby. An excellent example of a lobby card set of eight. You also see some 8x10 black and whites included with this too. All press style material or made to display in the lobby. $460. Nice price on these as well. Now, here's a James Bond beer can, believe it or not. This is from Phoenix, Arizona. Now, I don't remember if this was a licensed product or not, but every single one of these, even with a ding, a dent, and rust on it, will still sell for hundreds of dollars. Fairly scarce, but they do show up. I have run across one in my life. It's just an excellent item. James Bond advertising just pretty much runs the spectrum of collectibles you could possibly imagine. All kinds of different things, even watches and personal items you would wear, sunglasses, jackets, ties, shoes even can be found geared towards James Bond collectors. Just a nice example here of a very scarce item. Now, Dr. No appeared in comic books as well, if you did not know that. Ian Fleming wrote this. This is Showcase Comics number 43. Now, Showcase is an excellent title of comic books. Dom, the primetime treasure hunter, will know this one right off the bat, I'm sure. 
Issue 37 has the group of my favorite superheroes in it. I loved them as a kid. Now, I won't call out who appeared in Issue 37 of Showcase Comics here, but if you do know, you're welcome to leave that information down in the comments section down below. Excellent, excellent issue either way. Interesting one here. This one sells very regularly. It's a decent copy here. First James Bond Silver Age DC comic book. $424, and this one is slabbed. Now, the next one here is an ST DuPont lighter. This is an excellent example of one of these. They make quite a few. There's gold versions as well with 007 stamped into it also. This is from Spectre. Decent collectible item, $1,268, and they sold 13 of these lighters. Just a nice example here. Then the next one here is a Seiko digital watch from the 70s. This is a James Bond tie-in. This is tied in with the movie when James is stealing a jet plane in the movie. He has his wristwatch set for things on it, and this is just the same basic watch that they showed in the movie. Comes in a box. There's also a TV watch that's shown in one of the movies, too, that goes for some insane amounts of money. $1,499 just for that tie-in on this item. Now, as I said, watches are an excellent item to sell. You're not going to run into them, though, for the most part. They're really high-end items if you're looking at, like, an Omega. But something like this would be something that someone may have missed. This is just a stand for that watch at a jeweler store. And this stand went for $919. Obviously, somebody with the watch wants the stand to set it up as a display item. Very, very unique, very nice item here. This would be something that people might not think of or might not put two and two together on what this is. So just an excellent, excellent item here. Now the next one's a Japanese car. It's a model sealed in the box, Japanese text on it. It's for the Austin Martin that Sean Connery drove in the movies. Just a fine example, $2,800, 60 bids. Just a monstrous sale. This is from the U.S. All these Japanese toys like this go for some insane amounts of money. Now here's a Corgi, which is a British line. They made a lot of the die-cast toys for James Bond. Gilbert is the other company that made most of the toy lines for James Bond back in the early days. Now, obviously, it changed as time went on, but just a fine example, box, paperwork, stickers, everything you want in this one, U.S. dollars, $693. And though this was sold from Australia for those from Australia here. Now, the next one here is the Road Race set. Now, I have run into this once before. Never in this nice of condition. Never complete. Always missing the cars. I have had one or two of the cars separately. All of these go for some decent money, especially if they work. This was something you had to order through the Sears and Robux catalog, if I remember right. Sears has always done specialty items from back way in the day. Montgomery Ward's had some also. So just a fine example here, $950. This is the James Bond Thunderball, basically the machine gun, spy gun, ricochet gun. It's Lone Star Japan. It's a nice example here. Now, this is a fairly scarce one here. I have never seen one of these in real life. It's in the price guide. It always books very high. It always sells very quickly and for a decent amount. $500 basically on this one. It's scarce to find the gun, but with the box, it's almost insanely impossible. Just a real nice item from Thunderball. Real early one, too. Now, the next one's one of my favorite. This is the James Bond Secret Agent Spy Attaché case. This forms a sniper rifle, basically. You take out the pieces and they stick together, and it makes a sniper rifle for kids, basically. I have only run across pieces and parts of this. I have never had the case itself or some of the other items in it. Just a few pieces here and there. It's a very scarce item, 590 bucks. You can see what it forms here. There's a bunch of pieces that actually snap into place. It came with some funny money and some paperwork also. The money shows up also and can still sell on its own. Most people aren't sure of what the money came from though so 590 bucks as i said just a fine example here now the next one is something new this is a prop replica of the man with the golden guns gun christopher lee's gun it's a perfect example the parts are made of metal it's got a real lighter real everything that snaps together just like in the movie the ballpoint pens the barrel and the whole works and there is the finished piece as you can see came in a kit you'd put it together Excellent example. Now, there's only a 1,000 of these made, and they all go for at least $1,000. Assembled, unassembled, however you find it, they go for some insane amounts of money. And as I said earlier, Gilbert was one of the biggest toy companies in England to make James Bond items. Now, this is one that I run into just loose without the box. Most people don't realize it's Sean Connery. 
It's not super, super scarce. They made a lot of them. They imported in the U.S. and across the globe, too. It's just one that most people do mix up. So just a nice example here. It has part of the scuba and his karate outfit also. Just a real nice example of this figure. Box is super hard to come by, as are some of the pistols these days that went with them. 230 bucks on this one here. Now, as they went on, as I said, they did change the company. Mego made the Moonraker figures, if you didn't know that. I believe there's three different figures, maybe even four. Jaws is one of the hardest ones to get, especially in the box. Roger Moore was the easiest one. I did have a Roger Moore when I was younger. Loose, without the box, without the clothing, this Mego figure always goes for some good money. $900 as you see it. And the most common Gilbert toys, or toys in general, that I run into all the time from James Bond are these Gilbert solid, basically like toy soldier style figures, but they're all painted so you can recognize the character very nicely. Excellent example. This is the whole set of 10 of them. They issued them several ways also. I've seen them in little hanging bags as well as these carded ones. I have run into these carded ones before. These were produced in mass quantity, so they're not super, super rare. There's other versions that do go for some more money, as well as these figures here for this exact set here they also issued other items for it like the laser pool table and the boat that landed ashore and the whole works just a nice example just not worth a fortune here and the last one are the gilbert adventure sets from this same exact line now it's the same figures we just looked at but they were boxed in sets you get several figures and then an item too this is the shipwreck there was also the laser pool table and several other sets as well as you can see they got all five of the sets together here scarce to get the sets like this 650 bucks you can see by the value the other one was roughly 200 versus this one for 650 bucks and it's basically every figure that was included in the set, plus all the accessories in these. So just a fine example of early James Bond items. Well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.